war. War never changes. In the year 1945, my great great grandfather. Yeah, all I know is I'm making some jokes. On serving in the army. I think people generally that describe right, okay. themselves as activists are fucking Wondered retards. Wondered when he yeah. could go home to his wife and the son he'd never seen. Yeah, he, he was all bark, no bite. Stay. He got his wish. When the U.S. ended World War II by dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the world awaited Armageddon. Instead, something miraculous happened. We began to use atomic energy not as a weapon, but as a nearly limitless source of power. In 2017, a YouTuber by the name of Tonka Saw came up with an idea for entertainment for the internet. Something alike to what you would see on Jerry Springer, two adults screaming at each other in front of a live audience for their entertainment. Inspired by an old movie he saw, he referred to this new form of entertainment as blood sports. The idea is to get two people who do not like each other and have them air out their grievances for all to see. However, this vision of his was still raw in its prime and it would not see its full potential until a certain little trout accidentally swam up the wrong river and started a chain of events that eventually spiraled out of control. This is the story of how a fun idea for entertainment and live comedy soon turned into a cautionary tale of not letting your own emotions overwhelm you. A tale of betrayal, hatred, downfall, and even redemption for some. This is the story of internet blood sports. June 2017, skeptic YouTuber Kraut and T joins Andy Worski on his show after raising up an issue with someone by the name of Rage After Storm for her video on race realism, claiming that she used a Daily Storm article as her main source. His appearance on Worski Live was a complete and utter disaster. Thunderfoot is in there. Do you Does think that mean anything? If it is a doxing server, Are you really trying to say Jeff Holliday is a doxer? June 29th. Kraut and T tweets out to Rage After Storm's place of employment, Kipper Central, telling them to review her recent video. A day later, she is fired and is labeled a racist. She leaves YouTube within the month. The skeptic community is obviously outraged by this. They saw this as Kraut and T essentially pushing someone off the internet just because he did not agree with her. Two days later, he goes on damage control with a video titled Artificial Outrage. This too was a complete and utter disaster. But this was the straw that broke the camel's back for Kraut. It was at this moment that Kraut and T decided that this was all because of the alt-right and that he needs to take the fight to them. He decided that race realism was his white whale and he needed to be the one to conquer it. He made several videos in the upcoming months trying to debunk race realism and the alt-right, which ended up backfiring for him because when you mix hot emotions with cold science, you're bound to get something wrong, which he didn't take into account until an actual biologist J.F. Garepi debunked Kraut's claims about Trout getting pregnant. Pregnancy is very short with the female. <laughs> Kraut, Trout's, brown Trout's do not get pregnant. <laughs> Did you just say the pregnancy is very short? happens through the trout swimming up river to mate the male does not remain with the female the pregnancy is very short <laughs> the pregnancy is very short it was a complete nightmare for Kraut and his ego. It was a complete and utter embarrassment. He tried to go the traditional way to fight the alt-right, but that didn't work. So he had to try something new. He had to fight this new crusade through unconventional, underhanded methods. He needed to start a shadow war. He started building a crew, a group of people that he referred to as the task force. Their objective? Gathering information on the alt-right and right-wing targets and other people of interest specifically anyone who was critical of Kraut and T. Kraut soon sent out the invites to his private Discord server to this new task force, and thus he started his war on the alt-right. Soon they launched their first operation, Operation Red Mackerel. What? Yes, it's really called that. 
and the express purpose of this operation was to gather private information about right-wing opponents in order to dox and blackmail them. They had an entire hit list of people they wanted to dox on their server under people of interest. This included people like Coach Red Pill and Baked Alaska, but Kraut, he was learning from his mistakes, albeit a little, and he realized in order for this operation to work, he needed a distraction, and thus a second operation was born, Mince Meat, the idea using large YouTubers in the skeptic and commentary communities to wage their war for them in the public eye. If they could get someone like Sargon of Akkad to denounce race realism and take the brunt of the focus from the alt-right, they could sneak in, grab all the information they need about their opponents, launch the docs on their targets, and get out with anyone ever realizing what the fuck actually happened. But for a secret op called Red Mackerel, something smelled fishy. There was a rat, a traitor, a Judas, if you will, who was planning to betray Kraut from the very beginning. In December 2017, the first audio leaks from Kraut's Discord server were made public. Someone leaked out audio from the server. Kraut's super secret club was now exposed and their plan was made public knowledge. JF, the guy from before who made fun of Kraut for not knowing how Trout reproduced, actually listened to the leaks himself on a live stream. About an hour's worth of audio leaks, to be exact. And so if you are sensitive to racial hate, please do not watch the rest of the video. We are about to hear what Kraut really thinks. The part about his intention or his regret that we didn't gas the French. Just use epigenetics research again. Oh, I used the wrong word. Fuck you, Frenchman. Jesus, we should have gassed all of them. Soon, more leaks came out, including a plan by Kraut to invite a Washington Times reporter into the Discord server with the hopes to further dox and deplatform his enemies. This only made his detractors make fun of him even harder, including Coach Red Pill, who actually exposed that Kraut and T was faking his accent to make himself sound more intelligent. Um, I didn't really care for his content because I didn't really care for his voice. And the reason I didn't care for his voice is that I realized something almost immediately when I listened to him. He's faking his accent. You see, the kind of accent that he uses, or he tries to use rather, is known as RP, received pronunciation. Now, received pronunciation is not a regional accent. In point of fact, it's a social accent, if you will. It's the form of speech that British upper class kids learn in private school, usually boarding school. Now I know this because, well, my parents lived in England since when they were children and so I know enough about British culture and a lot of my friends speak RP and you know, some of them, we tease them about it because it's kind of funny. Uh, it's a little bit like the mid-Atlantic accent that William F. Buckley used to use. It's, it's artificial and it denotes social class. Now Kraut and T uses this RP accent, but the thing is, he's faking it. It's not real. He pretends to have it, but I know enough to know that he doesn't speak RP. It was no surprise after that happened that Coach Red Pill ended up getting doxxed. Kraut may have tried to be careful by using a proxy to leak the information on Kiwi Farms, but with 10 minutes of research, most people were able to put together the pieces that Kraut was behind it. And not long after this, people started digging up information about Kraut and T, and they found audio and chat logs that portrayed him to be both a racist and a cuck. In a twisted form of irony, the person who started this anti-race realism movement because it was so horrible and racist himself was a massive racist. He was both Islamophobic and against people from the Middle East in general. And thus, Kraut and T lost any and all credibility he once had. But something interesting happened because Kraut brought out the worst in himself, the people he held close, and the people he was trying to eliminate off the internet. He brought out something new for the skeptic community, a new subgenre. And thus, internet blood sports as we know it today was born. Mundane man, he's a false flag, rap, land is bad, and he's got no sack, and that's a fact, cause Jim made sure 
August 2018, in the fallout of the Kraut doxing saga, Internet Blood Sports undergoes a revolution in what subjects and people are involved when doing a show. Because the Kraut saga brought in such a massive audience for Internet Blood Sports, there was an overwhelming interest to bring in and focus on people from the skeptic YouTube community. After seeing the kind of stuff that came from the Kraut saga, people were curious what else was going on with the skeptic community that could be brought to light. It was a content renaissance for everyone involved with Blood Sports. Ethan, Ralph, Andy Worski, and Tonkasaw were reaping the rewards from this growing interest in this content subgenre, and many other content creators saw the potential of entertainment value that could be achieved from entering this community. However, internet blood sports only worked when there was drama to be talked about or created. Now, I'm not saying the content isn't good without drama or controversy, but most people weren't coming in to watch a heated debate about the ethics of journalism and race realism. They were there to see the absolute worst in people, and many were secretly hopeful for the next big implosion from the skeptic community they wouldn't have to wait long. From the middle of 2017 to August 2018, rumors started circulating that Monday Matt was flagging down videos critical of him, which was sadly ironic because Monday Matt himself gained a lot of attention and credibility during the Gamergate scandal when his video critical of Zoe Quinn was taken down through a copyright claim by her. This all started to bubble over for him and he eventually decided to accept an invitation to the kill stream to claim his innocence. On August 10th, 2018, Monday Matt appears on the kill stream with other guests. He hops in the call and it is already a disaster. He is put on the spot when he is asked to reveal his YouTube flagging history. He is obviously shaken by the request and he's pressured to show it, revealing that he did, in fact, flag down videos critical of him. So this weekend, I didn't, uh, I need to well, catch up. Well, I, I don't know. Dick, Dick has his own program. I'm talking about the kill stream. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Fuck. My bad. Yeah. All right. Hey, let's kill stream. Let's Talk to Dick uh, Let's stay on topic here, boys. Yeah, let's stay focused. Have a... I'm really interested. I think I'm just like Elsa. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry, my my my, my inner merch. This is a really long. Monday nights when we were painting the fucking Mona Lisa. <laughs> it took like a second to share mine. All right, here here we go. Screen shares live. Let's see it. All right, hold on. My pants are off. Oh Jesus Christ! All right, Matt, what Where are you doing? Head. How's it taking? Watch it. Look at all those tabs. I have a lot of tabs open, but. I am reporting. But nothing, oh, but nothing. Oh, on, yeah, wait on a minute. Oh, nothing that's on that. That's video. just. What that's, the that's, fuck? So. <laughs> I have been in a not the best place mentally. And, now, wait a minute. Oh, Matt, oh, no. Matt, no. So, yeah, that's. that's that's wait, it. No, that's, no, I, I, dude, I, wait. wait. His reputation was ruined. He lost over 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. And that was the end of that. Or was it? Because right after the scandal, he started making videos addressing his mental health, which came across to some as him using like, mental health to excuse his flagging campaign. Mistakes, and you look back at at uh, some stuff that you've maybe done that you're not proud of. Germany's in a very precarious position. And to manipulate his audience into not criticizing him. And that was the end of that. Wait, no. Wait, what, really? There's more? Okay, so, in December 2018, Matt gets caught lying about the flagging situation again on a stream regardless of the fact that people saw his real flag history, and once again loses even more subscribers and credibility. Tonkasaw starts labeling him as actually delusional, and finally, that was the end of the Monday Matt saga. But it was also the beginning of something else. Cracks started a show in the internet blood sports community, and soon after, all-out civil war would be raised. You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough There's a million other people with the same stuff You really think you're different, man, you must be kidding Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it Time for a brief lesson on world history On June 24th, 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated Which then followed up to Austria-Hungary declaring war with Serbia But because of defensive pacts, this soon caused countries from all around the world To declare war on one another to uphold these defensive pacts Which caused World War I In late 2018, something similar happened happened with the internet blood sports community. In the months after the Monday Matt saga, the IBS community started facing a problem among themselves. Accusations of doxing, video flagging, and even just general shit talking. Eventually this led to Andy Worski breaking off relations with Tonka Saw, which broke off relations with Mr. Mediger and Ethan Ralph, which broke off relations with Baked Alaska, which in short everything went to shit. Baked Alaska started going at it with Andy Worski over an incident of Andy's family members getting doxed by one of his friends. And then he started having an issue 
issue of his own audience which caused Mr. Mediger to go after him, which was probably the most embarrassing thing he has ever gone through because he got bull rushed on his own live stream. Oh, uh, what's up here? What, what, do we, we have a problem? We, yeah, I don't think we have a problem. We're, I think we're, we're making good together. content. Everyone's fucking having Everything's good, good. I, I freaked out a little because people were saying stuff and I thought it was going to get me banned. I don't get offended by anything, but now I, I admit I overreacted. Fuck it. They can say whatever they fuck they want in the chat. I'm not responsible for it. So there we go. Thank you, Daddy Jim. Okay? <laughs> Best, Best of luck, luck I guess. I guess. I'm going to go back then. Um, uh, <laughs> what do you mean? What, what, what do you mean? Best of luck? What, what is this? Why, why are you treating me weird? We're, I'm not. I'm not treating you weird, Bake. It's just. It's a weird fucking heel turn in the last 48 hours from you, and I, I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's fucking. Uh, well, I think you're. Wait, 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 wait. So I'm not allowed to change my content, Jim? I have to. Always you're 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 allowed to change Jim, your content, Jim. Bake, you're allowed to change. I love you. Fucking base. Yo, I love you, Jim. But guess what? You're fucking anonymous. I'm in the streets getting attacked by Antifa. I love you, but just. I go Bake, through, I go through a lot of stress, your, No, 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 you chose to I put yourself there, there Bake. Bake. You could have made any video you wanted. You could be yeah. a let's player, you could do a cooking channel. Yeah, and guess what? You, 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 you would shit on me for that. Shit. You would shit on me for that. Hey. But guess what? I Did I shit on you for that? No, I shit country. on you for turning on your yes, fucking you audience when it became I, convenient. I didn't all turn on sell my out. audience. I told my audience You shit yesterday. on your audience because it was convenient and you wanted money, Bake. And it comes through crystal fucking clear that you did that. Fuck you, Jim. came out crystal fucking clear that you turned on them because it became convenient. Jim. I gave them better content today. I got attacked by Antifa. You didn't give them better content, asshole. Yes, you got more did. views than the Ralph Retort did when he was having it. fucking all sip and fuentes no. on. Ralph was fucking leeching my stream because it was so good. Leeching your stream. Oh, he outdid you. He, he's not gonna he outdid your stream, no, Bake, by Ralph, three times the numbers because no. he put on content people wanted to fucking care. watch. Oh, then why are you? Why are you watching my content? Why was I'm not? I'm not going to be watching your content anymore, Bakes. Oh, I'm not. I'm not going to be watching it if you're a fucking sellout. I have no interest in watching this or anyone. I'm a sellout because I'm fighting for our country and Antifa's. A oh country. yeah, sing me the song of your oh, people. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. Jim, I'm going to ban Jim, people in Jim, chat Jim. because it's toxic. Oh, oh I didn't really mean oh, it, but I'm afraid to fight it because I'm out oh, talking about Antifa. Fuck off. Why don't you show your fucking face? Oh, okay. Hey, good luck, asshole, with your channel, Bake. Nobody's going to fucking watch. Watch it. I and like you, you down Stop in mediocrity. In mediocrity where you belong, you no, fucking no, sellout no. asshole. Have oh, fun with the thought. Dude, Have fun I'm with your LA I'm friends. Let's see how well it works out for you. Let's see how well it works out for you, you fucking Jim. cuck. Then, Takasa and Andy Worski started going at it after they ended their friendship. Remember what Matt and Kraut did? Well, Tonka did. And accusations started coming that he was flagging down videos and running operations to target his detractors. This caused Ethan Ralph to start going at it with Takasa, and things started to get nasty, and I mean really nasty. All the hate and animosity was getting to Takasa. This caused him to challenge Andy Worski to an actual fight. That's right, baby. IBS was going IRL, which caused just a little bit of hype and of course I mean it was going to be a huge event with promoters getting involved a venue scheduling a date for the fight and even professional fighters from the UFC to get involved people were excited this was going to be the defining blood sport event of the century and Andy Worski started training and he was keeping everyone updated on his training promotion health and everything else that he was doing to prepare for this fight and Tonka on the other hand well, Tonka wasn't really vocal or excited. You see, Tonka saw had no intention of actually fighting anyone he challenged, but he did not tell anyone that. He never submitted any of his medical paperwork or signed any of the legal documents needed to be approved to fight Andy Worski in the first place. He realized too late that he shot himself in the foot when he challenged Worski, and now he faced the ultimate lose-lose scenario. If he fought Andy Worski and lost, his reputation would tank and people would make fun of him. If he called off the fight, his reputation would tank and people would make fun of him. So what did he do? Well, nothing. He just decided not to show up. Andy Worski! To elaborate on what Shamir had been saying, Andy Worski is making his way to the cage. His opponent, Tonka Saw, did not show up. Two internet personalities. 
making a name in the show. Well, he does have a belt, though. Well, I wonder what it's for. <laughs> making the most of the experience with the no-show. Andy Worski here. That's disappointing, but it honestly didn't surprise that many people. As mentioned before, he didn't submit any of the documents needed for the fight to happen, and he tried several times to sabotage it from happening in the first place. He attempted to do this through a Twitter telephone game where he gave out misinformation to Worski and the promoters, and then was trying to draft up demands that he knew Andy Worski would not agree to. Need to do to get cleared. He goes, mid-January boxing depends on the commission. He is coming to the States. Because fuck Canadian commissions, uh, but he needs to pick a legit one. Well, I don't know what. I'll just fight you on a sidewalk. I'm gonna like you're bringing up commissions. I want to just fight. His plan obviously didn't work, and he lost all of his credibility on the internet. The Kumite was destroyed, and a winner in the IBS Civil War was declared. Ethan Ralph's Killstream was the uncontested platform for internet blood sports, and Tonka fell into a pit of obscurity. And Andy Worski reveled in the win. His numbers went up. Public opinion of him was at an all-time high. He was on top of the world. Unfortunately, like the tale of Icarus, as he was ascending, he flew too close to the sun and burned his wings. Andy was trying to milk everything he could out of this win and decided to go after another person he had fell out with and whom he grew a negative disposition. He launched a video campaign against his former friend JF. Yes, that's right, the same JF from the Kraut Saga, and his good fortune ran out. People weren't too fond of the videos on JF initially, not because they were bad or anything, but because he didn't realize his audience still had a soft spot for JF, and the following videos on him and Tonka would soon take their toll on Worski's mental health. It's never a good idea to fight a war on two fronts, even when you're decisively winning on one end. Eventually, his audience started turning on him and his own mental health started to suffer. He started doing more and more to appease his audience, but unfortunately, the damage was done. He even got into trouble for trying to utilize the stand your ground law on someone he had gotten into a fight with on stream, essentially pulling a gun on them and threatening to shoot them if they really wanted to fight. Fucking piece of shit. Let's fucking go. Kick this guy's fucking ass. Let's, let's go. Just... You're lucky you're not fucking on the ground bleeding, you faggot. No, don't say that. Right. Yeah, he, he was all bark, was no bite. Yo, stand your ground. I, I stand your ground. Stand, stand your ground. There, he, there he is. Stand your ground, sir. Stay back! Stay back! And grab the fucking what? speaker! Stay back, stay back. Go aim, 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 aim. Stay back, guys! Go, Alex. Stay back, stay back, stay back! After that, his reputation and credibility suffered, and now that YouTube has banned him from the platform, he has slipped into a similar pit of obscurity as Tonkasaw has. Although, in my opinion, I personally think this outcome is probably the saddest and most sympathetic here, because he clearly wasn't a bad guy. He was actually one of the more forward and trustworthy people involved with the internet blood sports community. But eventually, he succumbed to the madness that surrounded him, and he would not be the last. June 2018, respected member of the Skeptic YouTube community and major Gamergate agitator Sargon of Akkad officially joins the UKIP political party in the UK in a very desperate bid to save the West. His political platform is focused on free speech, men's rights activism, and Brexit. He describes himself as a classic liberal who is opposed to the alt-right even though arguably he was working with people on the far right side of the political spectrum. His campaign was a total and utter nightmare. He was labeled as an alt-right extremist 
extremist, and many of his views on feminism were constantly brought up in interviews and debates by his opposition. These include, but are not limited to, Sargon claiming that feminism contributed to mass shootings. Yes, that was an actual claim by him during his political run. He said in his own words, feminism is a disease of the modern age that has disenfranchised and radicalized young men, causing a rise in the number of mass murders. Obviously, this wasn't taken very well, and many of his political opponents and enemies within the media had a field day picking apart this statement. Then there were the rape comments, and yes, it's as bad as you are thinking, because an old video and tweet from 2016 from Sargon made headlines. The tweet from him said, I wouldn't even rape you, hashtag anti-rape threats, hashtag feminism is cancer. What's worse is that this statement was a direct response to someone saying that they were a victim of frequent rape threats. This was brought to light during his political bid, and honestly speaking, this was the worst case scenario for him. This was the nail in the coffin for many who were already hesitant voting for him based off of his views alone. But Sargon had a big brain moment. You can't run a channel called The Thinkery without being a big brain. Trust me, I should know. But he decided to double down on the rape comments. Not only did he refuse to apologize for what he said, but he added another comment saying he might rape her, but nobody has that much beer in the world. In regards to the person he made the comment about in the first place, he followed this up by saying rape jokes are empowering for rape victims because they are no longer controlled by those jokes. Another massive mistake, but okay, if doubling down didn't work, maybe tripling down would is what nobody in this situation would say unless they were smoking crack and huffing lighter fluid, but Sargon, he was feeling lucky. So in a 2019 press conference for the parliament elections, he tripled down. He once again refused to apologize and added more fuel to the fire by going on the attack and saying she was being a giant dick by laughing at male suicide, so I was being a giant dick back. This ended horribly for him. He pretty much turned his campaign into vagina repellent. Unfortunately, Sargon did not realize you need to appeal to women voters no matter what country you are in. So this went from him essentially shooting himself in the foot to launching a nuke onto himself. And in the middle of covering this entire political saga was a YouTuber by the name of Mr. Mediger, someone with a reputation of not giving a shit what political views you held, only whether or not you were making a fool out of yourself while arguing these views. And he had a lot to say about Sargon. Definition of drama. I mean, you can look That's at almost any topic and, and say, well, you know, this, this this pleases me. This is just drama. I don't want to talk That's, about that's this. a great question. I don't know. Um, uh, I, suppose, me, waiter, I suppose I would waiter, just say... Uh, waiter, uh, uh, where are my appetizers? I've been waiting yeah, for 30 I, I would minutes. Say I would just say it's... 30, uh, 30 minutes, waiter. Where are my appetizers? Actually. My frittatas are going to get cold. Can I, speak to your, can I speak to your manager? No. I, I this Maybe service is, this service is horrendous. I heard I heard. I heard you were going to be pitching that. A big brained idea, so I wanted a front row seat to watch it. Yeah, actually, I'm kind of glad you're here, Jim. He's kind of glad I was there. I don't know how glad he was by the end of it, but he was very excited to have me there uh, with Ralph and everybody else listening, because he was going to pitch his amazing idea to us. Um, it's it's really smart thinking, not something us plebs could really come up with. I mean, us small brained people, us uh, plebeians, uh, you know, a little peon brain motherfuckers. We can't get up to the level that Sargon's operating on, but he has got, uh, it's ironclad, really. It's, it's ironclad uh, with his idea on how to save the West. Let me, uh, let me just adjust here. Let me, let me pull it up. We'll, we'll look at a few more clips here and there. But let's, let's take a look. Let me find these timestamps. <laughs> find out what, uh, what uh, his great idea is. Let me pull this up. Who's we? I, that sounds very collectivist. Collective I thought we were individualists here, Carl. The collective internet. Do you not think that would be funny? Do you I think mean, how, anybody on the internet gives two fucks about Gamergate at this point? It's it's no, become a joke. No, like, no, no, I don't, Jim. That's the point. That's the that's the entire point. <laughs> what is your pitch exactly? Get get the band back together? Is that what is that what you're saying? Like I don't I don't understand. What, what would look? They think Gamergate is a tremendous universal and categoric evil. Right? I'm Jack. fucking lost. What are we talking? What is your plan? Oh, no. What is your? I guess I what's your idea? Hit, hit us with it. Try and use a bit of just. Just try and look a bit ahead. Just look a bit ahead. How if, if we're if talking you, about Gamergate? You I'm were... looking. You know, actually, let me interrupt this because I I, I think this is a maybe a good point to to maybe go over some sargonisms. These are things that I've noticed he likes to do on streams. Uh, maybe maybe I'm out on my own here. Maybe you can agree with me. If you look over his past things, I'll, I'll come up with a nice little image for it later on and compile it on the list and we can put it up on screen someday. But these are my list of Sargonisms. Uh, Sargonism number one. 
he will always show up for his stream late. He does this repeatedly, and I'm almost 100% certain it's some kind of weird, petty power play. By making the host wait for him, it shows that, uh, I, I don't know, maybe he's more powerful or popular, but he does it a lot. Sarganism number two. He always has to leave because he's very busy, or he's very sleepy. So he'll show up late, and then he'll leave early. These are two things that he does quite often. Now, sarganism number three, which we've kind of seen here, is he will say something vague and dumb, and then wait for you to fill it in for him. And if you can't fill it in you know, for him because you have more than two functioning brain cells, he'll say something along the lines of, well, I guess you just couldn't understand. I guess it's too much for you. It's, it's, it's too uh, far past your intelligence for you to grasp or comprehend. Let me show you the way by talking about it. Somebody wants to bullet point those for me. Keep track of them. You can tweet it at me later so I can come up with a nice little image. But those so far are three sarganisms, which I've noticed quite a bit. Oh, and don't forget number four, smugly chuckling. You can't forget the smug chuckle. This, of course, led to Sargon getting mad and having some pretty hilarious interactions with Mr. Mediger. I highly recommend looking at their debates on YouTube. Unfortunately for Sargon, instead of listening to him on how he was making a fool out of himself during this entire political campaign, he continued forward and... Oh, he lost. Not only that, but arguably he helped contribute to UKIP losing 22 of its seats in Britain. But hey, at least the online community did not make fun of him throughout this long and stretched out process. The state of internet blood sports right now is a bit complicated, and I say that because the majority of the people involved with the creation or popularity of internet blood sports have either lost their core audience or have been kicked off of YouTube entirely. However, Ethan Ralph's Killstream is still the undisputed king of the IBS subgenre, or rather I should say what is left of it. He and Andy Worski are pretty much all that's left of internet blood sports, and they have been banned from YouTube. Although, as we talked about with Andy Worski, the people who are involved with this subgenre tend to unfortunately crack under all the overwhelming negativity and go absolutely nuts, and it looks like that might be the fate of Ethan Ralph, because recently, he's leaked his own sex tape, and he's been accused of not having the consent of the other person in it, which would make it illegal. And at the moment of recording this segment, he has gotten himself in even more trouble by posting this tweet. And of course the internet can't have that and there's currently a doxing campaign against him right now. Mr. Mediker is also off of YouTube, although this seems like a bittersweet ending because he appears to have made the choice himself to leave the platform after his account was reinstated after being banned. He mainly uploads a bit shoot now, but occasionally he'll make a video on YouTube mostly making fun of their guidelines. Andy Worski's mental health has seemed like it's improved, although he's been banned from YouTube. You can find his content on DLive along with Ethan Ralph's. He is a co-host of Ralph's Killstream, thus he is still involved with IBS. Kraut has resurfaced albeit he had to completely rebrand his channel because his reputation never recovered. Monday Matt appears to have come back as well, although with a different strategy than Kraut and Tees. Instead of pretending nothing happened, he's embracing the memes that came from his IBS saga. That's right, somehow Monday Matt was able to embrace what happened. His channel still hasn't recovered fully from what happened, but hey, it's a good sign moving forward. Takasa, arguably the founder of Internet Blood Sports, has not recovered either. He's rebranded his channel as Toggy Time. It seems like he's moved away from the IBS subgenre in favor of traditional podcasts. You can find all of their links in the description below. And with that being said, we put a bookmark in a chapter of internet history. In conclusion, the future of internet blood sports is honestly uncertain, considering how YouTube cracked down on a lot of the people involved, from the people behind the creation of internet blood sports to the people who just made it popular on the internet. I definitely got some things wrong in this documentary. I've been working on the video for the past six to eight weeks, and I've tried as best as possible to correct any mistakes, but there will probably be more, so I apologize in advance. There's also a lot of critical assets missing from this video, and that is because Google has made it very difficult to collect critical information about internet blood sports, so I was working with limited resources. Please don't bust my balls too hard about it. But it also inspired me to make sure I finish this project no matter what, because I believe this content subgenre does deserve its place in the internet archives and, and shouldn't be redacted like it never existed. 
Also, there is a lot more I had to edit out, and ultimately it did cut down significantly on the length of this video, which in my opinion is kind of a good thing because I don't have to worry about copyright strikes or anything like that, but I do apologize for that as well. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the documentary. Please leave a comment down below if you did, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload, and I will see you all in the next video.